Lucy, how have you been? Good, pretty busy though. How about you? Well, same. What have you been busy with? I've been reading a lot about Noah since we talked about him last week, and I really like that part about God making a promise to him and his family. Yeah, that's one of my favorite parts too. God's promises are really cool. They are. I just hope I can get a promise for myself one day. What do you mean? Well, I've never gotten a promise from God. Sure you have. I think I would know, Carl. Well, think about all the promises that are in the Bible. I know, there are some cool ones, but I don't think they're for me. So that's why I'm waiting for my promise. Wait a second. I think we need to play a game right now. What game? It's called Promise or Not. How do you play? Well, it's easy. I'm going to read off some promises that are in the Bible, and you're going to have to figure out whether or not it's a promise for you or not. Got it? Got it. All right. Let's do Isaiah 40, 29. God gives strength to the weary and increases the power of the weak. Hmm. I don't think that's for me. All right. Round two. James 4, 7. Submit yourselves to the Lord. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. That's a tough one, but I'm going to say not for me. All right, third and final round, John 3:16. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. Now, I've heard that verse before, but I don't know if that's a promise for me, so I'm going to say no. Okay, well, let's look at the scoreboard. We gave you the three promises from the Bible. You chose that zero of these promises are for you. So let's see if you were wrong or right. How many of these promises were made for Cassie? Whoa! All three! Isn't that incredible? I guess, but I don't know. I just don't know if that makes any sense. I can understand that can be confusing. But when promises are made to God's children, that means all of God's children. Remember Abraham? Abraham from the Old Testament? Yep. God not only promised that he would take care of him and his family, but that his legacy would continue forever. So God made him a specific promise? Yep, and that promise wasn't just for Abraham, but it was for his kids, and their kids, and their kids, and their kids, and their kids. Basically forever. And that's the cool thing about God. I guess you're right. It's pretty cool that God's promises are for now and for later. And you know what's even cooler? Ice cream. Yeah, well, no. That does sound pretty good. But what I was going to say is... Polar bears. They are pretty cool. What? No, I was... I was going to say that's our big idea. Our big idea is polar bears? No, the other thing. Ice cream. Yay, that's our big idea. What? No. Okay, this is getting out of control. Just roll the big idea intro. Today's big idea is polar bears holding ice cream. What? No. Oh, man, this show is going off the rails. Sorry. This week's big idea is God's promises are for now and for later. So on the count of three, let's all say it together. Ready? Ready. One. Two. Three. God's promises are for now and for later. Woohoo! Good job, everyone. That was great. So this was a good day. Sure was. I'm glad you now realize that God's promises are for you now and for later. Yeah, I'm also really excited too. For what? For the polar bears eating ice cream, of course. Are you kidding me? There's no polar bears in Florida. It's way too hot, first of all. And secondly, I'm kind of terrified of polar bears. Hey, boys and girls, this is Pastor Jason, and we are on week three of our series, The Promise. Now, we're going through the book of Genesis. We went from all the way from the beginning to the Garden of Eden to Noah and the flood. Today, we're going to talk about Abram and God's promises to Abram. Now, our big idea for today we want you guys to really get is God's promises are for now and later. Now, we're going to start out with Abram, and you may know him later. He gets his name changed to Abraham, a very famous person in the Old Testament. And so God had a couple of things he, he wanted to do with it, uh, Abram, some really big, important things, actually. But first, God needed to do something, and that was to leave his home, leave his country, leave everything. Now, it's not like God's saying, hey, um, I need you to leave for a little bit and come back. You're going to work out of town. Now, he's saying, get up and leave everything. It'd be like someone, God asking you, Hey, uh, I need you to leave the entire country of the United States and go somewhere else and start new. So Abram was a little afraid, but he trusted the Lord and he trusted God. So with that, God promised to bless Abraham. He promised to make him the father of many nations. He promised to make his name great. Abraham didn't see it at the time, but he was kind of like, I'll do it, God. I love you. I trust you. Um, Abraham was afraid. He didn't know what to do. So he went out anyway. He took a step of faith and he trusted the Lord. 
But God also made a really specific promise that he'd make him the father of many nations. But Abraham didn't understand because he was old and childless. He was in his 90s. How, how am I going to have be the father of many nations? How am I going to have a son? But God wanted Abraham to know that he's going to bless him when the time comes. Now, God did bless Abram through this time. He blessed him with a lot of wealth, a lot of a land. He blessed him immediately right away. But the one about being the father of nations, having a son one day, Isaac, would come later. And that's what this Bible story is about. That God can bless you right away. He can bless you with a good grade and a test, some wisdom for, for school. He can bless uh, some things out of your life. But sometimes God's going to bless things later in your life. Maybe you're 10 years old and you're praying for a brand new car that you can start driving. God's probably not going to answer that prayer because you're not ready for that blessing. You know, we have to trust God because God knows the future. We don't. And so when we ask God for a blessing, say, God, I really want a new car. I'm only 10 years old. I'm only in the fifth grade. We have to trust God that he knows the future. He says, you're not ready for that blessing. Can you imagine if God did give you that blessing? What if you were in six years old and you're in first grade and he gives you a brand new car? You're not ready for that blessing. And God knows that. So other things in our life, maybe you're parents are praying for a new job or they're praying for some uh, like a health victory, someone's sick and God's not doing it right away. You got to trust God and say, okay, God, I know you're not blessing us right away, but I know later you will. I can always trust you, God. And that's what we really want to um, get to this point today in our Bible story is that just because God's not blessing you now doesn't mean he won't do it later. That God's promises are for now and they're for later. We want to use that in our Bible verse, our memory verse we've been going over the last three weeks, which is Joshua 21, 45. Not one of all the Lord's good promises to Israel failed. Everyone was filled. Which is still a great verse because if God promised you something, God promised you a financial blessing or to do well in school if you trust him and do your homework and study, he's not going to break his promises. Whether that promise is for tomorrow or 10 years down the road when you're in high school or going to college, God will always honor his promises. So boys and girls, we really want you to remember that just because you don't see God working right now, he's working for the future and your future. So trust God and know that he always has your future in mind.